I'm Mark Ebney, peanut entomologist at the University of Georgia, and the person responsible for the work that is presented here on this poster is Dr. Pin Chu Lai, a recent graduate from Dr. Srinivasan in my labs, and our co-authors are Dr. David Bunton in Griffin and Dr. Sudi Bag in Tifton, Georgia. Uh, the, the work here is focused on the reliability of docilizer for detecting tomato spotted wilt virus in leaf and root tissue from symptomatic and asymptomatic peanut plants. And to give you a little bit of a backstory, this, this project began because Pinchu was working on studying the spatial and temporal spread of tomato spotted wilt virus in commercially available TSWV resistant cultivars. And the question came up with how to deal with or how to assess asymptomatic infection in her studies. Um, previous work had used docilizer to uh, confirm infections and determine infection rate, and that's what we started doing. But then we started asking questions about are we, are we getting a true picture of what the infection rate really is? Uh, because some studies that had looked at uh, TSWV detection in root tissue versus leaf tissue had shown that docilizer TSWV positivity rates are much higher for root tissue than leaf tissue. That led to uh, Dr. Srinivasan and I having a, a pretty heated discussion one day in which we came up with two kind of obvious hypotheses. One was that either that there may be more TSWV present in root tissue than leaf tissue, and the other was that perhaps docilizer is providing false positives when we test root tissue, and that led Pinchu to this work in which she compared TSWV detection using docilizer, RT-PCR, and QRT-PCR in leaf and root tissue from both symptomatic and asymptomatic plants, and also used the QRT-PCR to quantitate virus load in these leaf and root tissues from the symptomatic and asymptomatic plants. Um, I hope that you'll take some time to peruse the poster and look at the results uh, carefully. And if you have any questions, certainly uh, contact us. Uh, but I'm just gonna make a couple of really key points here. And one is, is when we look at symptomatic plants, there was no difference in detection method uh, in terms of positivity rate for leaf or root tissue on symptomatic plants. So whatever detection method you choose to use, or we choose to use provided similar results. Uh, but when we got to asymptomatic plants, what we found was is there was no difference between the, the techniques for leaf tissue, but for root tissue, docilizer produced a very high positivity rate and that was significantly different from either of the PCR techniques. Uh, that presents a problem. It certainly raises some questions as to what the, the cause of that result might be, and it's been suggested that the choice of enzyme label uh, that you use in docilizer may be affecting these results, and that certainly needs to be looked at. Um, that's something that we're going to need to do in the future. But for now, I think uh, if we're if we're testing, if we're trying to confirm the presence of virus in asymptomatic plants, uh, using docilizer is going to be um, a risky way to go. And when it comes to tomato spotted wilt virus load by tissue type. I think the key thing here is that in asymptomatic plants, there was no difference in the number of N-gene copies in leaf or root tissue. But in symptomatic plants, what we saw was that there was a greater number, a significantly higher number of N-gene copies in leaf tissue than root tissue. And that suggests that leaf tissue would probably be a better choice for confirming TSWV infection in symptomatic plants. Uh, when we looked at uh, just symptomatic versus asymptomatic plants, as you would expect, there were more N-gene copies in the symptomatic plants across tissue types than in asymptomatic plants. Um, again, I invite you to take some time and read through the poster. If you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to address them. My email address is at the bottom of the poster, mradney at uga.edu. I appreciate your time.